Israel offered Pegasus a tool that cracked encrypted messages on iPhones and Androids to countries like India, Hungary and Mexico in order to ensure a shift in their positions at the UN, the New York Times has claimed in this year-long investigation. And India voted against Palestine at the UN after the Pegasus deal, says this report. And for more on this, I spoke with the former Ambassador Syed Akbaruddin, now Dean at the Kotalia School of Public Policy, who served as India's permanent representative to the United Nations in New York from January 2016 to April 2020, when this vote came up at the UN. First and foremost, this report, Pegasus was offered to Prime Minister Modi uh, during the Indian uh, Prime Minister's first ever visit and an Indian Prime Minister's first ever visit to Israel in 2017 as part of a $2 billion package that included uh, missiles. Your response uh, to this report. And in return for this, subsequently, India voted in favor of Israel, denying observer status at the UN Economic and Social Council to a Palestinian human rights organization. So, Sarah, I must say I'm a little bit amused at this quid pro quo that is being projected. Uh, frankly, I was the permanent representative for four years, uh, right from 2016 till uh, middle of 2020. Um, in this, I remember this case quite well because um, it was a rather mundane case of a Palestinian NGO. Um, I think it was called Shahid or Witness. Uh, Shaheed. Shaheeds, Shaheed. something like this. Um, it came in the what's called the NGO committee, uh, which is a very small committee of the UN ECOSOC. Um, and uh, initially, everybody didn't have a problem with it. So it was pushed to the ECOSOC for approval. And at that time, um, several countries came up and said that they had found some linkages which were not highlighted by this NGO uh, during the initial submission. Um, so uh, we had to take a call and um, we ourselves had many, many concerns about um, uh, NGOs being infiltrated by terrorists. In fact, India had actually proposed a format to do the vetting, not for this case, but in a generic sense. Hmm. And therefore, when this case came up, uh, my colleague who came, uh, who handles this committee came to me and said, Ambassador, what do we do? And without blinking an eye, I said, well, if this is a terrorist concern. All they are asking is to delay this to the next meeting. So why should we have a problem at all? I never consulted anybody. I never asked anybody and gave the directions because this was in consonance with our policy. So nobody contacted me from Delhi on this. Nobody contacted me from Delhi after this. Neither did the Palestinians contact me because this was an NGO. Uh, it's not a state representative. This was not seen in the UN as a issue of Palestine. Because if you see the Palestinian votes before and after, we didn't change our stance. Hmm. So I'm a little surprised that the New York Times picks up a disparate vote on a small NGO and links it to a bigger story. I, am, I have no idea about the bigger story. I was a, a permanent representative in New York. So I can only give you a perspective of what happened in New York. And as I said, uh, please go ahead. No, no, sorry. So I had so many aspects to this. One, the proposal made on the Shaheed vote. That you're saying there was absolutely no consultation with New Delhi about how this was a decision that fell under your purview and you uh, went ahead with it and voted no. And in the end, the vote got rejected by a 28 to 14 vote. So India voting either way would not have uh, changed history in any way. Uh, the vote was, I mean, the NGO was not uh, approved by a vote of 20, uh, uh, 25 to 18 or something like this. Okay. So that the proposal uh, couldn't go through and we voted on the right side of history there. Also, we voted in consonance with our general position. Uh, we have delayed NGOs ourselves several times, not for a few months, but for longer than that. So there was no issue. I'm, I'm a little surprised that without even checking the background, 
this story is being put out and linked to something else so nobody reached out to you for example and you don't know if the new york times reached out to anybody else in the mission there in new york on this vote who was responsible for the way india voted so uh, both my colleague and ms palomi the uh, tripathi who was there the first secretary then and i have since moved on and I, they didn't certainly didn't contact me uh, neither did new delhi contact neither did the uh, uh, israeli ambassador contact me it was a low level issue which was raised with my colleague she came to me and i just said yes go ahead and there the matter ended so i am a little surprised to link it with another issue which is a, a bigger issue and i have no idea about that issue i was only a mere diplomat doing my work and i don't think that anybody else would have voted very differently on the substance of that issue so and you can look at the votes of india in 2019 itself after that on israel related issues we continued to vote the way we voted in 2018 or 2017 or 1970 for that fact okay you say that uh, india's stand has not changed but the fact is mr akbaruddin that india's stand towards israel has of course warmed up this is well known especially since the second term of uh, prime minister modi but uh, uh, to go back to the times report the times report says that in 2019 india voted in support of israel at the un's economic and social council over the palestine issue um, uh, uh, and it says that this was they've called this was Uh, for this Palestinian human rights organization, and the New York Times called this a shift in India's position. Was this uh, not a first? Because there were even Indian press at that point of time that reported it as a first. Was this not a change in uh, India's decade-old position on on two-nation theory? So, first of all, this was not about a two-nation theory. It was about an NGO. um the the palestinians never asked us for a support neither did the israelis at a high level it was about an ngo let's be clear we looked at it as a issue of an ngo which had perhaps terrorist links and a year before we had abstained on a similar thing this one when it's coming consistently uh, that there are ngos we ourselves as india moved uh, were working on a framework where we said every ngo should be vetted for the un designated list for example tomorrow we would uh, otherwise be accused of a uh, ngo from another country having a designated uh, un terrorist so we were already working on that and this came right in the middle of, of that uh, discussion and so we had no issues at all and that vote was confirmed by everybody at the un so if the new york times was serious they should have asked certainly me i would have said the same thing i'm telling you because that's what there is the matter ended there nobody ever came back to me if this was such a sensitive issue if this was the quid pro quo then somebody would have sensitized me or later on said you had done the right thing nobody even questioned me on this and it the matter ended there you are right the indian press then made a big issue of it i was then a diplomat i didn't want to uh, uh, alienate either side on this but the truth was even then i had told many of my colleagues you are just beating on the wrong bush and there were many journalists who had told them informally but this is how some people work but i'm a little surprised i must say that the new york times has done shoddy work on this aspect i don't know any other aspect because i was not involved i don't know in the, uh, the bigger issues there but on the issue that this was the pro quid pro quo mr akbaruddin you keep saying hogwash. you were not involved you were just a mere diplomat but i want to ask you um you were the permanent representative of uh, india to the un between these crucial years of 2016 to 2024 whole years when we saw the second term of the modi government where we saw for the first time a change a warming up of relations between india and israel right we know diplomatic ties between these two countries were formally established by the narsimha rao government way back in 1992 then we had israel opening its embassy india opening its embassy in tel aviv but all of this really picked up after 2014 in 2018 israel's prime minister benjamin netanyahu became only the second israeli prime minister to visit india 6 months after the first indian prime minister ever to visit israel all of these uh, through this whole period you were india's permanent representative to the un 
can one actually believe you when you say that you are just a mere diplomat at this point of time? Would the UN and the US not be the place where uh, a lot of these discussions, you know, reach outs, uh, uh, diplomatic overtures, etc., would be taking place? So you're right. Our ties had improved, and there is no doubt about that. It was visible to everybody, including at the UN. I have written in my book that. For the first time, Israel endorsed a candidate to the ICJ. This was an Indian judge um, uh, in 2017. This was open knowledge that our ties were warming up. But it didn't mean that even the year that we won the ICJ election, have a look at the records. We did not change our vote even then on the specific issue of Palestine. Sure, we nuanced it in other areas uh, where interests coincide. Um, uh, certainly states will work together. So I don't think there is anything to hide about it. Sure, our ties had improved, so had they reflected at the UN. But this was not that case. Um, that's my only point here. This was too small an issue to be linked uh, to a big uh, change in ties. They were already changing ties. The Israelis were, of course, using it uh, to their advantage. We were also gaining from it in some ways. So ultimately, it worked out well for others, and there's no hiding that fact. So I want to just uh, clarify again one last time. This, um, um, the New York Times says this was part of a package that was exchanged, a $2 billion package that included missiles, and this was a package that was signed when Prime Minister Modi visited Israel, the first visit by an Indian Premier in 2017. So you were in no way involved in the discussions, the, the run-up, working out the details of how to make this a successful trip because uh, where one would assume that all members of the Ministry of External Affairs, especially those in New York working who have access to both the Palestinian side, the Israeli side and, you know, the Americans would be working around the clock on such a big visit, the first ever visit by the Indian Premier to Israel. Sure. Let me reiterate for you that no, I was not involved. Okay. It was not required to be involved. And there was no need because we knew that relations were improving. And so we needed to nuance our issues. Uh, we were working more uh, closer together on a whole range of other issues. Mm -hmm. Not on this issue and not on the issue of Palestine because the Israelis knew very well, as they know even now, you can look at the voting record even now, whether at New York we have fundamentally changed and you will notice that we haven't. Uh, because the issues of principle, we still remain committed to it on other issues. We have nuanced it, and there's no hiding that. Everybody knows about it. And what do you attribute that to, sir? To good ties with Israel. I mean, uh, India no, and change. Israel. Is that a, a you know, diplomatic requirement, geopolitics? Uh, if you could you know, explain for our viewers why that has happened since, uh, I mean, you are a professor now of uh, diplomatic relations and political affairs. Sure. Um, when ground realities change, Diplomacy also adjusts. So it's normal for diplomacy to adjust to changing ground realities. Um, 25 years ago, we didn't have that strength in our ties, and therefore, perhaps we were never even meeting them. Uh, sure, in 2016 onwards, when I went, we were regularly interacting, um, engaging with each other, um, explaining our views where we couldn't help them, and acknowledging their support where they did help us. Um, and this is not um, anything unusual because a large number of countries were also shifting. It's not only that India was the only country doing that. We were looking at our interests. They were looking at their interests. And so were those who were supporting um, um, uh, Palestine on other issues. So um, changing dynamics will always be reflected in diplomacy. I take that point. All I'm saying is this is too small an issue to be linked to those changing dynamics because nobody bothered about it for me uh, till now. Uh, you are the first person who asked this question to me publicly and therefore I agreed to speak to you because it was taken for granted that our co positions coalesced on that specific issue and we supported. Uh, we didn't, I didn't have to think about it. I didn't ask for permission. Uh, neither did they get to me before that. Not after that. It was taken for granted that this was the right decision there. 
So I rest my case with that because uh, I don't think that's a linkage. And I must say that the New York Times on this thing erred and erred egregiously. All right, uh, Saad Akbaruddin, yes, we did reach out to you and uh, thank you for uh, responding and agreeing to speak to us and give us this interview. Thank you so much. Thank you.